A lesson for December the 6th, 2015. Lesson 1. As we start a new unit, Unit 1, it says, What We Bring to God. A lesson title is Holding On to Principles. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, 4th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Our background scripture is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 23, and the 20th chapter, verses 8 through 11, and also chapter 31, verses 12 through 18, and also the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 3 and 8. Also, there's uh, Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 15, and then Matthews, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14, and Acts, the 13th chapter, and the 42nd verse. Our printed text, Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, and the 31st chapter of Exodus verses 12 through 16, holding on to principles. Our lesson name as a result of studying this lesson is that how that to review the joys of obeying God's rule and understand and express how Christians observe regular times of work, rest, and worship in their daily lives holding on to principles. In our printed text from Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, it states, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea, and all them in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The seventh day appears in scriptures as the day of God's rest in the finished work of creation. We find stated in Genesis, the second chapter, verses 2 and 3, where it states, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. We have to understand that during the long period from the Garden of Eden to Mount Sinai, no mention is made of the Sabbath. After the exodus of the Israel out of Egypt, then the Sabbath was revealed to Egypt. We find stated in Exodus sixteen twenty three where it states, And he said unto them, talking about Moses, repeating what God has commanded him, And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. The Sabbath, observation was part of the Mosaic law as we seen in, in uh, Exodus 20 verses 8 to 11. The Sabbath was the, the observation of the Sabbath was the fourth commandment. It talks about how that God rested on that day and that God had appointed as the Sabbath day at the time when God brought 
Egypt, I mean, when God brought Israel up out of Egypt, God provided them with manna from heaven. And then he commanded them that on the sixth day that they were to gather double, but on the seventh day that there would be no gathering of manna, but that they were to rest and dedicate that uh, day uh, unto the Lord. And so we find that the Sabbath was given after, at the time of the giving of manna. So we find in our text in verses uh, 12 through 16 of the 31st chapter, it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people six days may work be done but in the seven is the sabbath of rest holy to the lord whosoever doeth any work in the sabbath day he shall surely be put to death wherefore the children of israel shall keep the sabbath to observe the sabbath throughout their generation for a perpetual covenant we have to understand that the Sabbath the command to observe the Sabbath was given to the nation Israel exclusively it was not given to the church but it was given to Israel exclusively we find in Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, verses 10 through 12, where it states, The Lord says, Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statues and showed them my ordinance, which if a man do, he shall ever live in them. Moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctified them. The Sabbath was given as a sign between the nation Israel and the Lord God as a sign to the rest of the world. We have to understand that as a Jewish ordinance, it has not been abrogated, changed, or transferred to any other day of the week or to any other people. The Sabbath was given, the observation of the Sabbath was given to Israel and to Israel only. The Sabbath does not belong to the church and is not to be observed by Christians. For the Sabbath day is part of the law. And we as Christians, we are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6.14 states, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under law, but under grace. The Jewish Sabbath was not changed to the Christian Sabbath, even even as circumcision was not changed to baptism. There is no such thing as the Christian Sabbath. The Sabbath have to do with law and, and Christians with grace. And to join law and grace is to unite what God has forever separated. Now we have to remember this. After the resurrection of Christ, 
Jesus and his disciples never met on the Sabbath, but on the first day of the week. We find written in the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 and verse 19, where verse 1 says, The first day of the week come of Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the tomb, and seeth the stone taken away. In verse 9, 19 we read of that 20th chapter of John, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them. We read in the book of Acts how that disciples and apostles did go into the synagogues on the Sabbath, but not to worship, but they went there because there where the Jews were gathered so that they might have the opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. The first day of the week is the day to be observed for rest and worship by the Christian church. We come together because Jesus was was resurrected from the dead on the first day of the week. And and it is a a prefigure, it is a type in the old testament as the eighth day or the day after the Sabbath. For we read in Leviticus 23 verses 10 through 11 where it states speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them when you come into the land which I give unto you and shall keep the harvest thereof and shall reap the harvest thereof then you shall bring a sheave of the first fruit of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you. And on the next day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. What did the first fruit typify? What did it represent? We find in Colossians, the second chapter, verses 16 and 17, where it states, Let no man, therefore, judge you in food or drink or in respect of a feast day or of the new moon or of a Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. All these feasts and festivals they were that was given to Israel in the Old Testament, they was representative of the Lord Jesus Christ and his work of redemption for mankind. For we find stated in First Corinthians fifteen, verse twenty, where it says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Jesus Christ, the first fruit, he was represented of those that and, and, and that they would be representative of him. When did Christ raise from the dead? Not on the Sabbath, for he lay dead in the tomb on the Sabbath. But on the first day of the week, on the morrow after the Sabbath. Jesus Christ is the first fruit from the dead, from them that slept, that, that those who were in the grave that put their faith in him, that he was the first to rise to live forevermore and never to die again. And so we see that the fact, also we have to understand 
when we study in between the Sabbath and the first day that the church was born on the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, which fell the first on the first day of the week. And this is why the church should keep the first day of the week and not the seventh day or the Sabbath. The Sabbath was a day of legal obligation. The first day is one of voluntary worship and service. The Sabbath is a type of the present rest into which the believers will enter when he ceases from his own work of trying to work for his salvation and to trust in Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.16 states, knowing that a man is justified, is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We keep the first day of the week, not as a Sabbath, but as the Lord's day. It belongs to him. It is a day that should be filled with worship, a day for the teaching and the preaching of God's word. We need to be mindful that Jesus Christ, he is our rest. Jesus Christ finished the work of salvation for mankind and that and that our rest is in him. That 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 we should not look to the law, for we could not keep the law. But Jesus came and fulfilled the law for us. So remember that our principle or keeping the principle is holding on to the fact that Jesus paid it all. And that in him we move we have and move and we have our being and that and that he is our rest. May God bless you and keep you.